Hi, I'm Kenny Anderson, Director of Multicultural Affairs for the City of Huntsville, and welcome to Impact. Each week we bring you information about great things that are happening in our community, and today will be no different. You know, for over 61 years, the Harris Home for Children has been making a difference in children's lives. And of course, as we continue to move forward from one generation to the next, society provides us with many opportunities to continue to pour into the lives of young people's futures to make sure that the next generation is well preserved. Here with me today to talk about the Harris Home for Children and a very special event that's gonna take place is my man, Tony McGinnis. What's happening, Tony? Thanks for having me, all is good. It's good to have you. Of course, you're the executive director of the Harris Home for Children and it's always good to talk with you about things because uh, you've always got something good going on. Well, this is one of those times where we definitely have something good going on. Um, we're just really out trying to start up our capital campaign, trying to get some capital improvements done to the facility. And um, we're really excited about what's about to take place in the community. Well, we're going to talk all about that today, but let me introduce my man, Delvin Sullivan. Uh, he is a board member of the Harris Home for Children. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's good to have both of you guys here. You guys look like uh, athletes. I, I probably do. <laughs> you yeah, both yeah. have histories as athletes, well-known athletes in this community and beyond. And uh, we're going to actually talk with Delvin a little bit later about the, a very special acknowledgement that he is going to be participating in a little bit later this year. But the Harris Home for Children, a place that I always tell you I have a very mm -hmm. close connection to. My very first job out of college was as a house parent on the mm -hmm. weekends at Harris Home for Children when we were back there on Oakwood Road. And uh, I would pack my bags up and uh, walk in on Saturday morning. I wouldn't see the light of day until Monday morning. And it was a very interesting experience coming out of college and having an opportunity to work with young people. And it was really my first taste of the kind of community service, community engagement kind of things with young people uh, in a way that was very meaningful for me. The Harris Home has for years established itself as a premier, premier organization as it relates to these kinds of uh, activities. And you've got a huge event coming up. It's called the 100 Churches Fundraiser Breakfast. And it is, I think, in line with what you're talking about with the Capital Campaign. Tell us what this breakfast is all about and what you hope to achieve. When Chessie Harris started Harris Home, just reading some of the articles and looking at some of the information that is still present at Harris Home, one of the organizations Chessie went to was the churches. And um, she really got a lot of support from the church organizations, not only her church, but churches throughout the community. When I first started about six years ago at Harris Home, uh, New Jerusalem sent us a check for $1,000. And, and I was like, this would be awesome if we got 100 churches to send us $1,000 a piece. This would take care of any major issues funding wise that we would have. We can still work from a working reserve and really start to build a better facility for the children that we serve. So what we're doing now is just reaching out to all the churches in the area. Huntsville is rich with churches pretty much on every corner. And we want to go to every corner and meet the pastors, let them know what we're doing at Harris Home, and hopefully find a way for them to partner with us so that we can meet the needs of the children that we serve. Yeah, I kind of call that gospel work. It's like taking what we say and putting it into practice and making it meaningful in the lives of young people. Delvin, you're a board member. I know that you're a very busy person too, but you certainly have made the commitment to be a part of this initiative. Uh, you guys are good friends, but I'm sure that your commitment to Harris Home goes well beyond that. Why do you make the commitment that you make to being a part of the board and being a, li a part of the lives of these young people? Well, part of what I do in the community is actually uh, a lot of work with the youth. Um, so coming on board with the Harris Home it was just a, an addition to the things that I actually do. And I have to commend uh, Tony and his staff for what they actually do. Us as a board has decided to go out and, and provide a list of churches and points of contact to uh, Tony and his staff and hopefully um, something comes uh, from that. So and, and in addition to the fact that us as board members will be knocking on doors trying to get additional assistance for them also. 
And Sonia, this really speaks to, I think, the mission of Harris Home as well as so many other nonprofit organizations where you exist in a community to make a difference in people's lives and to improve the quality of life for someone. But it really takes a collaborative effort to make that happen. You cannot survive in this community without the help of all of those moving parts that also make up the community as well. And I imagine that's a big part of why you're going after this target population. It is, and you know, not only are we reaching out to the church community, we're, look, we're reaching out to the business community. One of our big sponsors for the event this year is Logicor. Miranda Bolden has really reached out to us. She came and took a visit to Harris Home, and man, that was awesome to get her to be the presenting sponsor for this breakfast. Um, not only Logicor, but we have other businesses who are on board with so many great organizations that Huntsville has, um, it's hard for those businesses to make a commitment. So when we get somebody to make a commitment to Harris Home, it's really special because we know that they don't have to, but we also recognize that they know the need and we're so grateful whenever we have organizations like that to partner with us and make that commitment. And you know, guys, at the end of the day, it's, it's really about this, it's the, uh, leg work that you put into knocking on doors and introducing potential sponsors to Harris Home and the culture of Harris Home and why their support matters. And it's all of the speaking that you do and the encouraging that you do. But at the end of the day, what you do is really about those young people. Mm -hmm. It's about making a difference in their lives and having an impact on their lives. They're not here right now, so I want you to speak on their behalf and tell us about what you see every day as you work with these young people and you experience all of this potential, but you really need resources to take it to that next level. When children come to Harris Home, they come because of no fault of their own. They come because of abuse, neglect, abandonment. And a lot of times they come with a lot of frustration. Um, back in 2011, there was a major storm that came through Huntsville. I tell people all the time that children who come to Harris Home come with storms. They come with all their possessions in a garbage bag, uh, just kind of self-defeated, no confidence. And so what we do is immediately we start to try to work on building that child up by providing them with meals, a place to stay, uh, giving them confidence, letting them know that we, un we, don't, we can't understand your situation, but we do understand that you're here with us. We want you to feel comfortable. We want you to feel like this is your family. And ultimately, we do want your family situation to get to a point where you can go back home and live a productive life. Yeah. And Delvin, it really comes down also to the difference that one person can make. You know, a lot of times people see the need is overwhelming. They don't know where to begin and they think it's so much to do. But I know from your own personal experience, you've made a personal commitment many times over throughout the community to start something, to engage some young people, to try to be the person that makes a difference in their life. So people listening today are wondering how can they make a difference in the lives of those young people at Harris Home? What would you say to them? I would say spend some time. Obviously we need additional resources so that Harris Home can actually maintain its operations on a day-to-day -day basis. But um, more importantly is actually spend some time, build some relationships, come to the Harris Home. Uh, you can meet with Tony, he's he glad to link you up with any child that he feels may need a mentor, because I, I found that conversation and relation goes a long way with the child. So the longer you talk with them, the more you'll actually learn about he or she. Um, and you can may be able to help them or her out of their situation. So um, I would say spend some time with an individual or a child that's at the Harris home. Yeah, I mean, that's just a, such an important thing. It seems so simple, but Tony, you kind of went back to I think one of the fundamental aspects of what we're talking about in that every human being has basic needs. They want to feel love. They want to feel a sense of security. They want to be encouraged. They want to have food. They want to have shelter. They want to feel safe. Just basic fundamental things that far too many of us take for granted in life and don't appreciate the abundance that we have and experience. And then you take a trip to Harris home and you realize, as you said, out of no fault of their own, here's a young person who simply needs somebody to believe in them, who simply needs a chance for somebody to care about them. And that's really what this is all about. It's all about really helping a young person find hope. 
um, just the basic necessities of life, just finding that hope and encouragement that one day I'll be able to come back and do the same thing somebody did for me. Yeah, boy, that's powerful right there alone. So it's 100 Churches Fundraiser Breakfast mm -hmm. for Harris Home, benefiting Harris Home for Children. When does it take place? Where does it take place? How can people find out more information about how to support you? Well, you can go to our website, harrishomeforchildren.org. You can also call Harris Home. The phone number is 256-837-0332. Um, the event is going to take place on March the 22nd, 730 at Harris Home. One of the things that we wanted to do was have the event on site so people will have a chance to view our facilities and really see what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, I think that's a great move right there. I mean, that brings the community in one place and actually puts them right on the property at which their commitment mm -hmm. uh, will make that impact. And again, uh, like you both have shared, you know, yeah, we need your money, but, you know, young people need your time. Yeah. They need your attention. They need your ideas. They need your ear. Uh, they need these opportunities to simply know that they matter and that they have value. And that's, again, at the end of the day, everything you guys do is on behalf of these young people just looking for some hope and wanting a chance. So uh, thank you for sharing. What else well, today? Yeah, yeah, you please. know, and you, you just kind of hit the nail on the head. I, I've always said, whether it's Harris Home or any thing that I do in the community, if you spend the time with a young person, your resources are gonna come. They don't necessarily have to come from you, but when you come out and you see a young person or you come out and visit a facility and you start to think, okay, how can I connect some of my resources to this place? It's all about spending that time first and then the resources are gonna come. Yeah, boy, that's powerful right there. Again, tell us one more time how people can get more information about the 100 Churches fundraiser for Harris Home for Children. The phone number is 256-837-0332. The website is harrishomeforchildren.org. And I always su suggest that uh, food events are common ground events. I mean, mm -hmm. there's no need to come and talk about anything other than the fact that we're having a great meal and we're doing this on behalf of young people. So we hope people will definitely get engaged and take advantage of this. Tony McGinnis, he is the executive director of Harris Home for Children. Thank you for being here with us today. Thanks for having it. We always enjoy this time, and we just appreciate what you do in the community as well. You've always been a mentor to so many people, and we just thank you for all that you've done and continue to do. Well, thank you. Delvin Sullivan, thank you for being here as a board member of Harris Home for Children. Thank you for being a part of this initiative as well. Thank you, sir. Um, I would caveat what Tony said. Um, You've actually been a mentor to myself and a, and a lot of other uh, folks, but uh, I, I do want to say I appreciate your efforts, the show, and whoever else is involved with helping the Harris home and any other parts of the city, to be honest with you. So thank you. All right. 61 years, quite a legacy left by Chessie Harris and her husband on behalf of so many young people in this world today who have been impacted by their lives. We hope that you will join them and being a part of this legacy as you move it forward into the, into the future and the next generation. I uh, want to remind you that you can also like our Facebook page at Impact with Kenny Anderson, and you can tune into this show as well as past shows and future shows uh, if you don't have the ability to catch us on cable. We also ask that you share this information with somebody. If it's meaningful to you and it has an impact on your life, then share it with someone else. I'm Kenny Anderson for Impact. We'll talk to you again soon.